It's time now for another human interest feature in our news report today. You know, Brian, they had uh, they had one of the groups of the outlaw mud shows, the the gatherings of them. See, there's only like 500 people in the country that that watch this dreck. But like I said, like a Grateful Dead crowd, they go all around and, and follow them. And since Indiana has a Republican governor and they've pretty much said, just hell with it, anything goes. They've got like a, almost 150,000 cases of coronavirus in the state of Indiana. We're not talking New York, Hong Kong, Paris, Moscow, Munich. Everybody's talking about pop music. We're talking about Indiana, cornfields. They're overridden with plague and pandemic, so they don't give a shit. So they let the outlaw mud show come in and bring all of their germs, and they had a big conclave with a bunch of shows. And the big news, at least I saw, because obviously I didn't watch any of these matches. I was not there in person, nor was I anxiously awaiting the results. But the big takeaway, the big news, the big photograph the big thing that this whole weekend of outlaw mud show goofs running their, hey, kids, let's put on a show in front of a scant few people in some local school gym somewhere. The big takeaway, a dwarf was forced to suck a rubber d in a nearly empty gym somewhere in the state of Indiana last week, ladies and gentlemen. When have you ever heard that headline before? Only in professional wrestling. And it's not just a dwarf. It's the most famous dwarf in all of professional wrestling today. Old Marco Stunt. Old Marco Stunted Growth. There is a picture that was circulating everywhere. There is a guy in wrestling tights and black fishnet pantyhose standing behind. Marco Stunted Growth, who is on his knees, thankfully facing away from the aforementioned black stocking netted gentleman. But he's down on his knees, and the gentleman in the black fish nets, I didn't know if they were crotchless, I couldn't see that that angle, is forcing Marco Stunted Growth's head down to where he will have to fillet a giant rubber with a suction cup that is sticking on a tray because obviously you can't i don't know if you're aware of this brian i've tried a couple of times it don't work you can't suck or you can't stick a suction cup dildo to a wrestling mat it won't stick to canvas it's got to be a hard like a metal thing or glass or what glass works well i will say but anyway he's trying to force the dwarf's head down to suck the And the picture of this is everywhere, all over Twitter and all over social media. And I guarantee you, I guarantee you that little Marco was probably thrilled to death that this picture went viral, as was all over every place and got such publicity. He would probably got a tickle out of that, which explains... A, a lot that he, that he would even do this, but much less that he would want it to be seen. And also it illustrates how stupid, ignorant, amateurish, unprofessional, and completely devoid of any common sense. This whole band of merry pranksters is that now populates the wrestling fucking industry because that little f and and here's another thing. Here's how Tony Khan is not only an amateur rookie promoter, but also apparently has absolutely no balls, and he has everybody's friendship, but absolutely nobody's respect. That little picture right there could have got Tony Khan's, and still might. Who knows? Could have got Tony Khan's whole little vanity project kicked right off the air. And. It's to the it's it it speaks to the amateur hour nature of this whole thing and the inexperience that they don't even realize that. I bet you Tony Khan might have been tickled at that and certainly didn't think, well, here could have been my whole goddamn 
empire and all this money I've spent on my father's could have been poured down the well. But these fucking people seriously don't think you can get kicked off television for so let me would you like me to explain to people how you can get kicked off TV for something like that? Yes. Well, let's say that, for example, some executive in the Turner Network hierarchy, what is it, Time Warner now, or whatever the fuck their their corporate leadership is, has some fucking jack-off teenage kid that likes this shit. And so, therefore, it's on his computer, it's on his phone in his house, or they're giggling about it or whatever. Because this can happen, because that's another reason why I, one of these days I'll still squeeze Wade Keller's throat until his britches are full. Because when we were trying to get on a television station in Virginia back in the 90s with Smoky Mountain Wrestling, one of the station manager's kids subscribed to the Wrestling Torch and had read that we were going to go out of business. So that's why they said that was one of the reasons why we we didn't pick up your program. Well, we did go out of business. Two years later, but anyways, somebody in the Turner Executive Network has a kid that likes this shit, and they see it. And let's say that that executive's wife is in a sexual group of some kind, whether it's sexual abuse or sexual trafficking or sexual Donny Brooking or whatever. And she says, honey is this one of those fucking wrestlers on your goddamn network on this show that you're talking about that is being forced to suck this rubber schlong after I'm, a, I'm about to go speak to the goddamn anti-sexual abuse women's committee or whatever the fuck. Brian last is it a fact or is it not a fact that from the time that Turner in 1988 bought world championship wrestling that there were high ranking executives in that company, the way it was configured at that time that hated wrestling, didn't want to have anything to do with wrestling and took every opportunity to try to stick a fucking knife in the goddamn wrestling company that they owned Cause they didn't want it on their air. Uh, yes. This has Since been well beginning. documented. Remember when you couldn't and, call foreign objects foreign objects? They became international objects? Well, yes. And I mean, that was, you know, but that was funny stories that we've told. But the forces that were at work were like, what the fuck? We don't want wrestling. But other people, including at the time Ted Turner, wanted wrestling. And one of the reasons why that they had no more wrestling was because at, at first the, the haters in, in Turner couldn't do anything when it was a wrestling company. Well, they lost $8 million last year. Well, that wasn't anything in the scheme of things to them. And then all of a sudden, Bischoff and the Stooges lucked into the fucking hot period, the three years where they made a fucking fortune, and the haters had to sit back. And then all of a sudden, when that fell apart, because they didn't really know how they'd done it, so they couldn't fucking keep it going, then all the haters came back out because now they're losing 60 million. And that was the perp and Ted Turner didn't have the power that he had 13 years previously or whatever and blah, blah, blah. And they had a buyer for the company and they still were doing ratings that now TBS would kill for, but they stabbed it in the back. As soon as they got the chance, they put it out of business. It wasn't because it was a bad show or a good show it was because a show they didn't want to have. And so every time, besides the fact that these outlaw fucks are going around doing these independent shows and then coming back to AEW with all of their testing, and already one of the guys at the at the group of mud show participants this past weekend in Indiana has tested positive, so he's told everybody, well, you better get tested, just make sure. Name's Handy Dan or Dan the Man or whoever the fuck he is. Besides coming back to infect your AEW bubble where you're supposed to be doing all this great testing. This fucking idiot on your television program, Tony Khan, is trying to get you kicked off the fucking air by having pictures of him going around the world being forced by a man in fucking black fishnet stockings to suck a rubber c in front of people. And you don't think there's a chance that even if a sponsor might not like that, 
that somebody in network might not like that if they find out that that's one of the people that they're showing for two hours on Wednesday nights from 8 to 10 in prime time. You fucking blithering dipshits. And it's not like I'm making shit up. What got Calgary Stampede Wrestling kicked off the air and 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 almost bankrupted them and then broke in the uh, the Ed Whalen era when Iron Mike DiBiase said if brains were gasoline the people of Calgary wouldn't have enough to blow their nose and they canceled the show. They can cancel the show for anything they want. That's another reason. When I was doing the third party bookings in the WWF office in the late nineties not only for the Steve Austins and the rocks and the stars of the world to go do these big autograph signings, to these malls, but also because I knew the independent promoters. That's why they gave me the job of booking the guys who were on the card or a middle card underneath weren't booked all the time. They could go out and make an extra 500 bucks, seven fifty, sometimes a thousand dollars plus do Polaroids uh, on independent shows. They still allowed this. My job was to make sure they didn't get booked anywhere that they'd have to do anything stupid. Of course, back then, there was no thought of possibly being forced to suck a rubber in the middle of the ring. But it was, to, don't have the guys working in bad rings where they'll get hurt. Don't, ha don't have them getting juice. Don't have them working for any promoters that don't pay their taxes or have their licenses up to date, which is where Dennis got me in a issue a time or two. Don't make any news as a representative of the WWF, such as obviously the guys, there were no intergender matches in those days, but they weren't going to be doing angles where they were pile driving women, even though they were doing it on television on Raw. I wouldn't allow my guys to do it on those shows because the office was concerned about that because it was a professionally run organization. Say what you want about their product. I guarantee, I guarantee you it would not be taken well if the head of program, and also didn't they just change their fuck Kevin Riley, the guy that greenlit this whole thing is out. They've got new people in. Do you think the new head of programming would like it if his wife or secretary or coworker or child or somebody on the street said, hey, see this fucking midget about to suck this rubber He's on your show every week. Fuck. Are they all out of their minds? Well, that's the second worst thing to involve one of the members of the stunt family that weekend. Second worst. You heard about the other thing, right? I, I, <laughs> the first thing or the second thing? I don't know what thing we're talking well, about. I didn't, it, it, I didn't know this until... He did something worse than being forced on his knees to suck a rubber... And blah, blah, blah. No, it wasn't him. Apparently, okay. and I was unaware of this until recently, Marco Stunt has a brother who wrestles also. Oh, joy. Logan Stunt. Oh, and boy. Uh, here's the headline. I saw this because a bunch of people sent it over, but I have a story here that kind of encapsulates everything. This is from Ringside News by Felix Upton. Logan Stunt accused of sexual harassment at the collective. Oh, good Lord. Logan Stunt has been accused of sexual harassment and inappropriate behavior at the collective. He's the brother of AEW star Marco Stunt, a woman who makes pro wrestling gear named Tina Louise. Not that one. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Not that one. Not the same one that was stranded on Gilligan's Island. No. Actually, she was married to a friend of my grandmother's son. Uh, but anyway. Um, well, that's a, that was very random, but go ahead. But it was. We knew Tina Louise. But anyway, a woman who makes pro wrestling gear named Tina Louise went to the collective to deliver some of her creations to clients. Logan Stunt then apparently went out to her car, and in her words, he tried to grope me twice, wanting to oh. see my breasts. Oh. She tried to laugh it off, but internally she was uncomfortable. She also told Stunt how uncomfortable she was. This caused her to miss many shows throughout the collective. She included everything she experienced in a four-page story detailing the entire ordeal stunt texted her the next day following the incident he said if i did anything to make you upset i'm sorry if i got the wrong idea i'm sorry i thought you were into me sorry for getting the wrong idea oh good lord she replied back thank you uh, and there's a whole bunch of text here she told the whole story and then since that time a couple things have happened it appears 
whenever we run shows again, I don't know if SUP is the promotion or just an account, but it says Logan Stunt will not be SUP. Logan Stunt will not be welcome at our shows or anywhere near the building. And also, it appears that Black Label Pro, which is another indie group, uh, will not be using Logan Funt. Uh, Logan Funt. Logan Stunt. <laughs> Going any going. What does this little fucking Cretan look like? We know what his fucking dwarf brother looks like. What's this guy? He looks just like his brother. I mean, I'm, I'm the photo is from the waist up. I don't know if he's a short. I'm gonna guess he's not. But he looks. It's the same gene pool. I mean, basically, he, he he looks like he crawled out from under the fucking double wide trailer in the trailer park. And then, I don't know if I should say this part. So I'm gonna. I don't know if I should say this part. So. But yeah, well, is it is it written there? Is it some opinion that you have that you? No, this was also sent to me. Hearing. This was also sent to me today related to this, and I'll just say it: it's someone who I kind of want to root for, but every time I see him on social media, I think he may be a fucking idiot. <laughs> Brian Pillman Jr. Oh, then wrote to this Tina Louise girl. Someone else asked for permission. They got it. They posted the exchange and. Damn, what it is that I guess he was trying to get information about this, and uh, the end of it that I saw here was after she said what was going on, he said, Okay, but this kid's whole career might be ruined. And the woman responded, Tina Louise, Oh, okay, so I can live with how shit happened and disrespected, not to say anything because of his career. What about mine, Brian? I busted my ass gear making for five years, traveling, learning, etc., and this made me want to give it up. He was basically trying to tell her, you know, what you coming forward with this accusation is going to ruin. Yeah, it's going to ruin the guy. Well, here's the thing, Brian, that's a good thing. The less of these stunts that we have in the professional wrestling industry, the better off. So it's a win-win. The woman got the chance to tell her story. And if it keeps us from having to look at any of the st stunted family, then that's a that's a positive. Besides that, uh, but it, and I I what the fuck? Now these little fucking tree elves think that they're goddamn <laughs> superstars. They're they're <laughs> fucking running around like like Ryan was, We're living the life of a rock star. Hairy little fucking sacks of goddamn fucking feathers that don't weigh a hundred pounds that look like little small girls going around groping and feeling up fucking women because they're goddamn big celebrities now. They're going to overstep their fucking bound. As a matter of fact, I'll go ahead and say this. I don't remember whether I said this or not. I heard about this. Fuck it. I'm going to go ahead and say it because I'm proud of him. Remember when they had that show in the Memphis area in South Haven, Mississippi, the AEW show, and they had the Memphis Legends? Yeah. And they announced Bill Dundee. And then uh, by the next week, they had unannounced him and, and he did not end up being there. I heard the reason was because apparently this fucking family of tree elves is from Mississippi and they started working on outlaw shows in Mississippi. And at one point, little Marco had been on a show with Bill Dundee and Dundee either didn't like his fucking attitude or just didn't like the way he was fucking exposing the goddamn wrestling business and slapped the fucking teetotal shit out of him. And I've, I've felt a few of Dundee's fucking slap the teetotal shit out of yet. I'm, I'm surprised it didn't goddamn paralyze Mr. Stunt, but, um, I can't believe these two little pricks. I, I didn't know about the other little prick, but I can't believe this little prick has existed at a professional wrestling locker room trying to pull his fucking little banny rooster bullshit and somebody not fucking just pile driven him and thrown him out in the parking lot. So wait, that's why Bill Dundee wasn't on that tribute to Memphis wrestling? Because he had that, slapped That's Marco what stunt? I heard, because he slapped the shit out of Marco's stunt and Marco called the fucking office and narked on him. Wasn't comfortable being around him. Probably, well, can you imagine? Because Dundee would have fucking slapped his shit out of him again <laughs> if he'd have seen him. If if you fuck with the wrestling business, Dundee will slap the shit out of you. And just the existence of that little fucking gremlin <laughs> is embarrassing to the wrestling business. And, and now his brother's a pervert. Well, good. Now we know the, the whole fucking hee-haw family got something wrong with him. Who did Jerry Jarrett slap? Why wasn't he there? I did, well, are you kidding? Jerry Jarrett wasn't going to go to an outlaw show in Mississippi to begin with. 